Hi, wow kids. Have you ever stopped to think about how amazing light is? We get light from the sun, from fire, lightning, and also from many man-made sources, from things like light bulbs or flashlights or even fireworks. Well, without light, our eyes can see nothing at all. But just the smallest amount of light gives us the gift of vision. Did you know that the human eye is able to see the flame of one candle in the dark as far away as 1.6 miles? I think that is pretty amazing. Well, many times road construction crews have to work at night when it's dark. For their safety, they wear special gear like bright orange vests that have stri strips on them that will reflect light. When a car or truck's headlights shine on the vest, it glows brightly so that drivers can see them, see those workers and not hit them. You can find many different kinds of reflectors on highways, on your bicycle. You might have a reflector like this or um, sometimes on driveways or even on your gym shoes. Sometimes when I run early in the morning while it's still dark out, I'll put on this little running vest that has reflectors on it so that cars can see me. How many of you have seen a lighthouse before? A lighthouse is a tower structure built near waterways to shine a light and help boats and big ships navigate safely. Lighthouses can mark dangerous coastlines with big rocks or other hazards that could damage a boat. They can also signal safe entry into a harbor. Well, before modern technology, ships needed help steering away from dangerous areas in the dark, and many of the lighthouses were built in the 1800s. You might be surprised that the light source in the lighthouse was not very big. It was usually just an oil lamp, something like this. But there would be a lens that was used in the lighthouse to magnify or make bigger and reflect the light so that it would, its bright beam could be seen a great distance away. The lighthouses provided protection and safety to the sailors and ships on the seas. Now, reflected light can be very powerful. A mirror is also a great reflector of light. Did you know that lost hikers have used little mirrors like this to reflect the sunlight and signal a helicopter or airplane for help? Now, a reflector is not an actual source of light, but it can still shine brightly when it reflects light from something else. What do you think? Is the moon a source of light? No, the moon has no light of its own, but it does reflect the light from the sun, and so it helps us to see at night. Does anyone know what the greatest light in the whole universe is? It's not the sun or another star. It's not the Milky Way galaxy or even a supernova. It's God himself. 1 John 1.5 tells us that God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. Many other places in the Bible speak about God's light. In the book of Ezekiel, he sees a vision of God in heaven and says that God shone with a radiant, brilliant light all around him. In Revelation chapter 22, it tells us about the day when we will be with God and will no longer need the light of the sun or moon because the Lord will be our light. When Jesus was here on earth, he told people, I am the light of the world. But now that Jesus went back to heaven to be with the Father, guess what? He asks us to be his light in this world. As followers of Jesus, 
God wants us to shine for him or to reflect his light to others. And that's what our verse this week tells us. Will you say it with me? You are the light of the world. Let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. That's Matthew 5, 14a and 16b. The important questions for us to ask ourselves are these. How can I shine for Jesus? And what do I need to do so I can shine brightly for him? Well, let's go back in time to the days of Moses from Exodus chapter 34. Do you remember how God called him to go to the top of Mount Sinai to meet with him and receive the Ten Commandments? Moses was in God's presence for 40 days and 40 nights. When Moses came down from that mountain, he had in his hands the two stone tablets on which God had engraved his laws. But the thing that Israelite people noticed most was Moses' face. It was radiant and glowing with light. His face was so bright that it made people afraid. So Moses actually put a veil over his face. Why do you think Moses did that? And why do you think his face was glowing like that? Well, it was because he had spent special time in God's presence. He was reflecting some of God's glorious light. It was obvious to everyone that Moses had been with God. I want you to hear from Moses 34, verse 34. But whenever Moses went into the tent of meeting to speak with the Lord, he would remove the veil until he came out again. Then he would give the people whatever instructions the Lord had given him, and the people of Israel would see the radiant glow of his face. So he would put the veil over his face until he returned to speak with the Lord. You know, when we spend time with God each day, reading his word, praying, thanking God and worshiping him, we might not look like a light bulb or a glow stick, but we can glow with God's love and joy, with his kindness and peace. You know, the more time we spend with Jesus, the more we will look like him, and shine his light to others. God's love and truth is something very special that we need to share with the whole world. If you love Jesus, don't hide it. Jesus said in Luke 8, 16, no one lights a lamp and hides it in a jar or puts it under a bed. Instead, he puts it on a stand so that those who come in can see the light. Do you know what happens? Let me see if I can light this candle here. There it goes. Do you know what happens if you put a jar over a burning candle? Well, let's find out. Maybe you've done this experiment at school. What does fire need to burn? It needs oxygen. So if I put this jar over this candle, it might take a little bit of time, but pretty soon what's going to happen? It's going to burn out. The light, there it went. It won't shine anymore. No. So God, Jesus is telling us, don't hide your, your light. Let it shine so others can see. Don't hide the story of God's love and salvation. Share it with your classmates, your friends, your neighbors. Share it with the world. Many years ago, the lighthouse keeper's job was to make sure that this oil lamp continued to burn and did not go out. But sometimes there were terrible storms or heavy fog, and the light could not be seen. So shipwrecks still happened. 
The ship could run into the rocks and break into pieces, spilling its cargo and crew into the icy ocean waters. There were times when the lighthouse keeper could be seen, could see people out in the water drowning and would run to their rescue, pulling them ashore and saving their lives. When we share the good news of Jesus, do you know we're like the lighthouse and its keeper? We show the way for others so they can be saved from sin and find safety and forgiveness in Jesus, a home forever in heaven. If you truly want to reflect God's light in this dark world, then spend time with God each day, obey God's word, and do the things that Jesus would do. Don't hide the fact that you know and love Jesus. Share the good news and shine the light of Jesus wherever you go. Be a Christ reflector. And remember our theme that Christ reflectors shine for Jesus. Well, last time we left Dan in desperate shape. When he screamed for help, he heard a rescue worker tell him, Be quiet. We can't get to you. Dan's heart was racing, and he could not think clearly anymore. A strange feeling was coming over his body. Was Dan going to pass out, or was he dying? And meanwhile, Dan's wife, Christy, was back in Colorado and had just gotten word that Dan was alive, but still trapped in the hotel rubble. She was packing her suitcase with boots and gloves, hoping to fly to Haiti. Christy would dig Dan out with her own two hands if necessary. Back in the elevator, Dan heard a voice. Dan, Dan, can you hear me? I'm coming to get you. It was Sam. The rescuer came back. Suddenly, Dan was fully awake, but he had no idea how long he had been unconscious. Sam's voice was clear. I'm coming through the elevator shaft. Within minutes, Dan watched as Sam lowered himself into the elevator car using a system of ropes and pulleys. He had a headlamp on his helmet, and Dan had never been so happy to see someone. Here, drink this, Sam said as he handed Dan a bottle of water. Oh, Dan drank every last drop. He felt like he was drinking gold. The water was so precious. For the first time, Dan could really see his surroundings. Everything in the little elevator was covered in thick gray dust. The only patches of color were blotches of dried blood on the wall and floor where Dan's wounds had bled. Sam knelt down and cut off the shirt that was wrapped around Dan's leg wound. He could see it was serious and rewrapped it in clean bandages. Dan found out that Sam was from Fairfax, Virginia, and he wondered if Sam knew what a hero he was. Dan told Sam about Lukeson in the next elevator. Lukeson, Sam is here to rescue us, Dan called. Yes, Danielle, I'm right here. Sam was able to get some water to Lukeson as well. Sam still needed to get more equipment and cut a bigger hole in the elevator car to get them out, but he asked if they needed anything while they were waiting. Dan asked for something to eat. Oh, a granola bar or anything would be great, but the medic above ground said that Dan could not have food. Dan knew what that meant. They were planning to take him to surgery when he finally got out. When Sam returned, they took Lukeson out first and then came to Dan with a big orange sled. Sam laid Dan in it and tied him down securely so he wouldn't fall out. He felt like a mummy. The elevator shaft did not go straight up. Because of the earthquake, it was bent in an L shape and was full of sharp metal spikes protruding from the walls. The passage was so narrow and dangerous, there was 
barely enough space for him to slip through. There were about eight men pulling on the ropes to get Dan out. Dan slowly felt himself moving through the, sh the shaft. Only a few more minutes and I will be out, Dan thought. He imagined how it would feel to have the sunlight on his face again. Suddenly, the sled hit something and Dan, Dan could feel himself tipping to the right as it slipped. Now he and the sled were dangling in midair. One of the rescuers yelled to the others, Hang on! We're losing him! We're losing him! We'll continue the story next time. And remember that Christ reflectors shine for Jesus. Will you share the love and light of Jesus wherever you go? I hope so. And I'll see you next time.